Campfire 30. Please help me welcome Heather. I don't know what was scary about it, but uh, it was gin, though, that I was drinking. <laughs> So the first thing, that, well, the next thing I guess you need to know um, about ghosts is you never use the words he or she or they when you're walking past a graveyard. Um, spirits don't like third person, so it's unkind. And if you think about it, you're out there dripping off the trees. You're, if you're walking, you're dragging your feet like you're walking through honey, and then you hear these livers of lives passing by saying they and she, she, she all the time. It's unnerving. All you've got left are your nerves and your hearing, and they'd have the nerve to get mad if they caught you listening. And you know someday you're going to hear that news about him. If not for your liver, you'd have lived a lot longer. I just hope that day you'll be with someone who can help you get home. Up against the wall, you don't stand so tall. So you better run, run, run. Put your armor on again. But isn't it time to recognize that we all live such broken lives sometimes? And it's sad but true that you still carry so much with you. It's sad but true that you still carry so much with you. And that song is recorded magnetically on a cassette tape that ended up in my car. My friend Sabrina bought that tape when we went to hear this band. They're called the Be Good Tanyas. We heard them at a community theater in Lewisburg, West Virginia in 2004. You weren't there. Um, and then that cassette tape ended up in my car three years later when I moved to Philadelphia, and then my car disappeared a short time later, which is more complicated and takes longer than it sounds. It wasn't stolen. Um, it disappeared in such a way that you really can't find it again unless you want to call Grun, and you can't call Grun. Uh, but he will come. So just remember that for a little bit later. Um, you know Cupid doesn't have it. Cupid only keeps things she can lift, and she's got puny wings. It's because she was kidnapped when she was little. She woke up to a red car and a green light and a full moon and a donut store. It was like this giant imaginary day up on poles over the gas pumps. The light wakes her up. She doesn't know where she is. That's not her mom up front. You can imagine she doesn't like anyone to help her move. So now Cupid goes to work in the evening. She carries her arrows under her clipboard. Let's say I'm you, she says to folks at the door. And then if their eyes widen, she learns to be quiet a little longer. She circled the ad in the paper, not once, but around and around in red like her training had taught her. Not in lipstick, though, it was too far away. She circled it in red ink, then fell asleep. When she woke, she called the number and acted like anybody. They were looking for people who wore their hearts rolled in their sleeve cigarette style. They said it wasn't easy. You have to knock on doors, talk to strangers, show them how something they care about is in need. About two weeks in, she was field managing. It was a lot of turnover. They trained in the afternoon and drank at night around the corner. They brought back stories about folks at the door. It was easy. When you travel, you can imagine the place very clearly, but you're still analog, so you'll still have to take the train. It starts one morning when we were walking by the lake and we saw the sun looking like this little tiny red dot. And she said it was one of those dots on the spine of the library book that tells you which section you're in, like gardening or science fiction. So that could be quite relevant, I mean, depending. So uh, what does red mean? Grun knows where all music is, including CDs and tapes that music is on, including Grun heard your mom singing in the shower. Grun knows where digital files come from and how they get to your phone. Grun knows where your earbuds are, but that's as far as it goes with you. As far as Grun knows, you can do one thing, which is here. You don't listen. That's not a problem. Sometimes you hold still. When you hold still, still gets up and goes to sleep on the couch. Still doesn't need your breath on its ear all night, you know? Grun knows where your car is if you have the radio on, but Grun doesn't care. 
Grun eats lunch in the band room at the local high school because it's better than eating with you. Grun <laughs> isn't even local. You remember that scene in that movie where the traffic reminds you of the sound of the ocean and the ocean reminds you of the sound of the band at that beach bar where they finally had that moment? Yeah, Grun doesn't. <laughs> Grun wrote home to say, love the weather the weekend you came here. Do you remember? It rained glass powder from the construction of the Comcast building, and the wind blew away all your clothes. But Grun thought this would be a great place to live, and Grun is not wrong. Grun runs under the highway and only coincidentally doesn't throw you off. If one day Grun didn't come, there'd be trouble, with bridge vibrations and an oddness to anyone rolling up the driveway. But Grun does nothing for you. Yet, when they run the herd from a helicopter, the herd is like a river flowing through the gate, saying something obedient to a co-worker. I love walking down the escalator. You get so much closer to the ground so fast, it feels almost like they're burying you finally. One or the other apparently was getting to me from the 16th floor. Never mind that. Uh, there were plants growing in pots. Never mind that. There was one girl there on stealth. She must have been hiding from the helicopters. Where did she sit? Must have sat on the bed. She must have sat on the bed. She wouldn't want to miss anything that went on there. Every evening at sunset, she was in her room. Can't remember if it was cold or warm, but it must have been. No one's looking for walking distance to a Walmart. What could you buy there that you can walk home? <laughs> Sometime later, the plants are all dry. They're still there, hanging, silhouetted on projections for an art show that isn't. Kind of like that spider that dropped down from the ceiling during that film fest into the projection. What even town was that? What would have brought a person around there? First, you'd have to find it, meaning know where it was already. There's nothing that would get you off the highway except seeing the exit you've been looking for already. What would make this a whole place would be if you had a point, three, a plane, and a double line that leads to the moon. When you go somewhere and he's not there, it makes you like him more. The whole scene was lit by the sound of what must be by now antique camera flashes recharging automatically immediately after firing. By the next night, the neighbors were be carefuling like good knee jerks. People always say if people work together, then people can overcome all the evil in the world. But think about it, people would say that. You can dismiss my advice if you want, but the main thing people die from is not being able to choose what happens next. So, you've been warned. Always be in control. Cupid's afternoon trainings are no joke. She offers one-on-one -on -one feedback, always turn that down. <laughs> you can't prove it by us, she doesn't live here. We don't think she even has a home. She's here with the sun. It blinds you when you get off the elevator. 10 a.m., that means it's been 11 hours since you finished the deposit, and then there was drinking. Other than that, you only remember the moment of first contact with the bed. What time did you get here? Hmm? She's always distracted when you ask that. There's hot coffee and hot water for tea. There's cantaloupe and cream cheese and bread. You suspect her, but you don't know of what. She's already drawn half the maps. She's clearing wrong and wasted papers from the clipboards. You won't be able to avoid the one-on-one, -on -one, actually, and Cupid only cares about numbers, so don't waste her time. She'll want your total. And then she'll want to know why, and she's going to want that in numbers, too, like can you walk faster or fewer doors or more or fewer minutes with losers or identifying marks. And then we all go out and she'll feed us? Yeah, and beer is on Central. What about train fare? They'll reimburse you. What if I make 300 in 10 minutes? Congratulations. Then can I quit? If you want, but if I'm you, I wouldn't tell anybody I did. What if I don't make anything tonight? Then you can try again tomorrow, but you probably won't. Why not? I couldn't possibly tell you that, but most people don't. There are spots on the wall you could stare at. Don't let language hog the spotlight. I'm rehearsing as I'm standing on the train. For the first few months, I got that feeling in my sleep, but it's gone. It's been however long. This one doomsday prophet I know, used to know. You can't see him anymore. He's been saying to me, look at these people out here. He's hard to hear, though. This is now a little something you are doing to yourself. All these characters will be back in some horrifying finale. Once in a while, someone comes through and touches the screen. It's hot and smells like dust. So this is when they were digital, but still supported by something that overheats. Hot, dusty lenses. It's just after solstice when 2017 pries your window open and drops in the smell of bleach and frying yellow squash, someone's kitchen, and police sirens. It's been widely proven by children that you cannot hold your breath until you die, but if I ever see that boy again, I'll ask questions after. First, we have to finish the maps. 
There is no medium but 10 a.m. And you by the swings, the bars hot in the sun, and hoof prints in the mud from last night's rain saying neighbor kids must have come by, but they're gone. We'll find it, no, I know, I know. Remember when we turned the radio on and a random pop song guided us home, but the house was torn down? That was nothing. Cupid is the man who takes the quarters from the payphones. She never misses touching one. That's as close as she comes. Before they dropped it, it was warm and blotted out the sun through the change slot. Nobody gave a thought to the cost. Each had come only after one thing, and what they don't say. I do. I do. I do, because hell is other people, and hell is not you. That's why at 3-1 Loss Prevention, we are listening until you turn us off. 3-1 Loss. During the cling moon, we give you anything you want. Prevent nothing. We only say that. 3-1 loss, we aim, we have him, we bet you're sorry. We have him right about now. The 3-1 loss family travels. The longer the pavement, the less the smoking motel. If anyone loved him, they'd have kept him inside. The gun was the heaviest hand held. Magicians were talking about how to get rid of each other with a wink. At 3-1 loss, the apologies I owe are listing. She only comes out for the boys, so what's the difference? You is still the best pronoun. She doesn't even use an arrow, you know. Straight, yes, but no bow. The cologne of the last man stays on the phone. You never say it right to them. So Cupid had ordered 50 fires from the bakery because she always gets the number wrong. They corrected in their sleep for her by then with tears in their eyes. You know how she's been. And then hush. But the bakery counts the fires and says never mind and delivers them on time. It's no problem. So she's stumbling before dawn to set them from tent to tent, from door to door. They have no concept of cobblestone here, but you can see she's falling on something. The way the field rises up and then breaks where they cut the bank to the access road, it's too much with the blue-green glass for coincidence. And besides, you can hear it in the morning. It's not constant, but on time, like the bus. Not the one that comes when you're ready, but the other one before that. To adults, the danger had always lay in lacing, and neither the innocent nor those who had made bad choices deserved to be laced, but lacers were shot in wings and could bring the comedic faster even than emergencies, and if you needed them, there was no one else. So you learned to leave the ends loose, and now when someone points it out, alike or not, that person's marked. And when you never kneel to fix it in response, only nod, then they know they fucked up, but they were only trying to protect you. No one looks out anymore. Everyone is super hands-on. And still everyone falls. So warnings were just something you said right before it happened. Finally, let me say this to you. I don't mind going down with the ship. Whether from radiation leaking, iceberg collision, or if one of you should turn to me with a thud. You're mine. I'm yours. We're stirring the weather. We're having a bad idea, but we're doing it together. I commit. I'm in. Whatever it takes to get us off this island. <laughs>